Welcome to Swiss Family Fun, where we help your family enjoy the best of Switzerland. Today, I'm going to take a little break from hiking, and I'm going to talk about the Swiss public school system. So I've been getting a few questions about this, and I wanted to share our experience from living here. My son is now 15, and my younger son is 11, and they've been in the public school system since they were in kindergarten. So we have a few tips to share. I'm going to do three videos so because there's so much information. The first one I'm going to talk about preparing for the long gymnasium, gymnasium entrance exams. And in the second one, I'm going to talk about secondary schools. So if they don't pass those exams, what happens in seventh through ninth grade? And then in my third video, I'm going to talk about the apprenticeship system. And that's the route that my son has taken. He didn't pass those entrance exams, and now he's going to be doing an apprenticeship, which we're really excited about. I'm going to tell you all about in my third video. Today I'm going to talk about preparing for the gymnasium exams and what I wish I had known and some of the details that I felt like were a little misunderstood at the time. Before I get started, I just want to say this is not a definitive guide to the Swiss public school system, nor is it going to guarantee you entrance to the gymnasium or any of these things. Uh, I'm just sharing all this information that I've gathered through our experience, so I hope that some of it will help you on your own journey. Also, it's important to note that it's very different uh, depending on which canton that you're in. So we're in Zurich Canton and we live in Zurich City, so the information that I give here in many cases will be very specific to where we live. It might be different where you live. Before I dive into the details, I'm just going to give a quick overview of what the Swiss school system is like. All the kids go to kindergarten and then they go to primary school through sixth grade together. And then after that, they start uh, splitting off into different tracks. At the end of, or end of sixth grade, some of the kids will go to what's called Long Gymnasium. And this is a six-year program. They have to take an instrument exam to be able to get into this. About 20% of the kids will go that route. And the kids that don't go that route will go into secondary school for two to three years. They have another chance to take that entrance exam to go to a short version of that gymnasium, which is more the academic route. The kids that don't go that track will then go to an apprenticeship with, where they are working and going to school part-time, and this is a three to four year program. So in this video, I'm going to talk about preparing for the gymnasium exams, which you do in sixth grade. If you live in Zurich Canton and you want to go to gymnasium, you have to take an entrance exam, which is not the case in all cantons. In some cantons, it's just the recommendation of your teacher. And I've known of people that have moved to other cantons to make it easier for their kids to get into gymnasium. But if you're in Zurich, you do have to take this exam. Your score on that exam, along with your grades at school, will be combined so they can have a final score that will determine whether you can get into the school. So if you have really high grades in school, this can help you if you have a slightly lower score on the test. Not all kids take the exam. So in my son's class, out of about 25 kids, only three took the exam and only one passed. In another class, there were 14 kids that took it and seven of them passed. It varies widely across schools and across classes about how many kids will take it and how many will pass. But this is a big thing that everyone's talking about in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. Will I take the test? How to prepare for this test? And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So this leads me to my first point. As you're preparing for this exam, school is not enough. They do not teach everything that is on this exam. It is not a goal of the Swiss public school system to get all the kids to gymnasium. This is considered an exception. This is for kids that are particularly academically oriented, that are really smart, that are really self-motivated, and it's to give those kids that are like that a chance to really focus on the academics and be pushed a little bit harder. So this is not a track for every kid. This is not the only way that kids can be successful in life and in their careers by going to a gymnasium. There are lots of other options. So this is just one route. So in the school, they are not gonna learn everything they need for this test. Now it also varies widely by school and by teacher. So some teachers are really focused on gymnasium and really help prepare the kids. And you'll see in those classes, more kids take the test and more kids pass and in other classes not. So it's quite unfair. It's really luck of the draw depending on what teacher you get. And so you really have to be looking at what are they learning in school and then see what's on the test and see where the gaps are. A lot of schools offer a free prep course as part of school. To be able to take that, you usually have to have a grade of five in math and German. The grading system in Switzerland is from one to six, with six being the best. So you need to have this five in order to qualify. 
In my son's school, this course started in August of his sixth grade, and it was once a week for 90 minutes. It was partially during lunch and partially during one of his math classes, which ended up being a problem because it was geometry, and so he missed some of that instruction. And even though he did the homework, he felt quite weak on geometry, which was on the exam, and maybe it was an excuse, but he felt like he wasn't prepared. So you should really look at what classes they might be missing at the time that they're doing the prep work as part of this prep class. One example I can give you is that on the test there is algebra, but my son had learned zero algebra in school. He didn't know how to solve for x, he had not even learned what a variable is, he had no skills in algebra. And I don't know how they're supposed to learn this outside of school. I don't really know any kids that are like, yes, I really want to learn about algebra on my free time. I'm sure there are those kids, but it's certainly not the norm. So we had to learn all of that at home. I had him doing Khan Academy exercises on the side. He would bring home these exercises that he was getting in his prep course and have no idea how to solve them. So we were working through them together and I was going over the fundamentals of algebra. But I just felt like it was just, it was too much. It was too much for us to do at home when he wasn't getting supported in school on these same topics. And he also had to do his regular schoolwork. So I found this super, super frustrating as we were preparing. Another thing that I felt like they don't prepare in the kids in school is with writing. So at least in my son's class, they didn't write very often and they rarely wrote essays. And there is an essay portion of the exam and they grade it quite harshly. So I felt like he was so unprepared. Even though he did some practice essay writing in the prep course, it just wasn't nearly enough. So we really should have started earlier with practicing writing, and we did do some of it at home, but he just needed so much because he wasn't getting it in school. So I felt like this was also a huge gap with what the expectations were on the exam and what sort of preparation he was getting in school. So if your kid is not a natural writer and they don't love to read, this is something you're gonna really need to prepare outside of school in order for them to perform well on the test. This brings me to my next point, which is prep early. So the test they take is in the middle of sixth grade and a lot of the formal preparation that is with these classes starts in the beginning of sixth grade. But I would start much, much earlier than that, especially if you need to really do catch up on things like algebra and writing skills and reading comprehension. Those should start much, much earlier. The first thing you need to focus on is getting good notes in fifth grade because by the middle of fifth grade, they're gonna, the teachers are gonna decide whether they're gonna recommend you for this Gimme Prep course or not. So by February of your fifth grade, you need to have a five in both your math and your German for them to recommend you. Otherwise, you're, you're just not going to get into those prep courses. By the beginning of fifth grade, you need to have an idea of whether you want your child to try for Gimme or not, and then take the appropriate steps. So this free prep course that they offer with the schools can be helpful. I would say it's mostly about test taking skills and familiarizing them with the material that's on the test. It definitely has its limitations. But many parents choose to put their kids in very expensive prep courses that are designed specifically for this exam. My son didn't take the private prep courses for the long gimme or the Kurtz gimme. He didn't pass either of those exams, but then we did put him in a private prep course for the last exam, which he did pass. So I don't know if that made the difference or he just was more mature and knew more, but I definitely felt like the private prep course gave him the focus and gave him a lot of time each week that was really dedicated to preparing for the exam. So if you are really, if you really want your child to pass the exam, I would say it's worth the money to put them in this prep course. These private courses can be quite expensive. I would uh, look them up, they're about 2,500 if you wanna do maybe 16 weeks of classes. They're usually on Wednesday afternoons or on Saturday mornings or Saturday afternoons, so two to three hours of classes each week. They also offer them during the school holidays, so the, during the October break or the February break right before. They also offer uh, focused classes just on essay writing. And I would say that might be really worth it because I think the essay writing is one, one of the most difficult parts. Another option is a private tutor. And if you're doing the tutor, I would say that would be most helpful for the essay writing. I think the group classes are really useful for the math and the grammar. You can find the past exams for many years. I think it goes back to 2007 on the website, which I'll put a link to uh, below. And so it has all the exams and the answers for uh, every year going back. So that's a great place to start for free and just start going through all those practice exams and writing essays on all those topics. You can even through these uh, private prep courses, pay for someone to correct just your essays, which is really helpful. So your child is prepared for the exam. 
Now what are the next steps? Well, first you have to choose which school you want to apply for. So there are 13 Lund Gymnasiums in Zurich Canton, and you have to take the test at the school you want to go to. You need to look for the information evenings that are held at the schools. They start usually in November and go through January, and then you just go to the evening, they'll tell you all about the school, and then you can buy a PIN code. They just give you a paper with a special code on it for 20 francs, and then you use that to register online to take the exam. You usually have to register by the middle of February, but you should check the school that you want to go to and see what their deadlines are. As you choose the school, you should read all the information about that school. So they have different programs and different focuses at each school. So some focus more on languages, some focus on business, some focus on science and technology. You want to make sure you're in the school that has the focus that your child's interested in. However, you should know if you're going into the long gymnasium program, I learned that you, after two years, so you have this kind of basic education for the first two years, you can transfer to another school that has the focus that you want. So congratulations if you passed the test and now you get to go to gymnasium fantastic but this brings me to my next point the hard work has only just begun because now you go to the gymnasium and you are in what's called a probate side or probationary period so for the first half year you are taking constant exams and if you don't keep a certain grade average by the end of this probate site you will be sent out of the gymnasium to secondary school and this happens to about 30% of the kids that enter gymnasium. That is a huge percentage. And my son has seen kids come back that were in his primary school, they went to gymnasium and then didn't make the probate site. So this is very common. They say there's no real shame factor because it is so common, but I'm sure that it would be quite emotional for some kids if they did all that hard work to get in the gymnasium and now they got kicked out. So that's really unfortunate. Uh, also, even if you make the probate site, if your grades do not stay above a certain grade average, they will either flunk you out or in some cases they'll allow you to repeat a year, but if your grades don't improve over that year, then you will get kicked out. So I was just talking to a friend of mine who's just finishing up with her Kurz Gymnasium, and out of 26 kids in her class, only 17 made it to the end. The rest of them either dropped out or flunked out. So it's still very challenging in these programs and you should definitely consider that. Even if you push your kids to pass the exam, they may not be up to the level of work that's required in gymnasium. So it's just something to consider. Another thing to remember about gymnasium is that it's not entirely free. So you're used to it in primary school that there's no fees. You don't have to pay for books or pay for any of the supplies that are in school and you don't have to do that in secondary school either. In gymnasium you have to start paying for your books and some of your supplies, some of the trips that they do. So it's not super expensive but there are some fees that are associated with going to the gymnasium. If you didn't pass, not all is lost. Most people don't pass and it is very sad for those that put in a lot of hard work in their preparation and then don't pass. I feel for you, we've been there, it just, it, it hurts. You should definitely have a backup plan if your child doesn't pass the exam. If they don't pass, they can always go to the secondary school in your neighborhood. This is what most kids are going to be doing. And then after two or three years, they can take the short gymnasium test, the Quartz Gymnasium test. And that allows them to go into the shorter program, so it's only four years instead of six years. But it's basically the same. At the end, they will get a Matura, which allows them to go into university. Uh, the school is still very challenging and very difficult, and so is the exam. One difference is that the exam has French on it. I'm going to go more into that later, uh, but that's definitely an option for you. But you should consider that in secondary school, they're not really preparing you for this exam either. They're really preparing kids to take the apprenticeship route. So for this reason, a lot of parents may choose to send their kids to a private secondary school or to a private gymnasium. Now, if you're going to a private gymnasium, I've heard that some of them still won't accept you unless you've passed the exam, So they and you also have to have high grades. So it's not just an option for kids that didn't pass the exam. They still want uh, kids that are achieving high academically to be in the private gymnasiums. The private secondary schools will accept you without passing the exam because that's why you're there, uh, but they will have different tracks. So the ones that I've heard about, they usually have a gimme prep track, and this is for kids that had a five in German and in math, and so they will be focused on preparing them to take the short gymnasium test after two or three years. And then they also have a track for kids that aren't preparing for gymnasium. 
So if you really want your kids to prep for that short gymnasium test, then you gotta make sure that they're getting into that right track at the private school. And this can be hard if their grades are not good enough. So you definitely need to be considering your backup plan as you're preparing for the Kurtz Gymnasium. Of course, private school is no guarantee for passing the short gymnasium test after these two or three years. It really depends on the teacher and it depends on your kids, uh, but it definitely is more focused on that than in the public schools. This is also one place where some parents may choose to take their kids out of the public school system and put them into private at one of the international schools. If you're planning on doing, doing that, you definitely need to talk to them early because there can be long waiting lists for these schools and you want to make sure that there's not a gap and then they don't have anywhere to go once they get to seventh grade. So with all this information, you might be wondering, should my kid try to take this gimme test? So there's some kids where it's really clear they get great grades, they love studying, and it's really clear they're gonna take their test. But I think most kids fall into this middle category where they're pretty good students, they get pretty good grades, they perform pretty well with a little bit of pushing, and you'd like them to have the educational opportunities that are available through gymnasium. So for these kids, I would say definitely have them take the test. Whether you pay for a private prep course or not, it's it's a really hard decision. I would say if they're really if they're really on the edge, like they have excellent grades and they're doing really well, but they just need a little more security, take the prep course for sure because you don't want them to just not be familiar with some of the material and have that be the deciding factor. I would say in most cases, just take the test. I think it's excellent practice to prepare. You're still learning a lot of material. It gives a good focus. It helps them stretch themselves a little bit. And that's what I did with my son. I was pretty sure he wasn't gonna pass the exam, but I knew that this was gonna be a good experience and it would also show him where his gaps were after he took the exam and saw that he didn't pass. Now his grades were quite low on that first one that he took and I think it was quite shocking for both of us. And then we asked around and pretty much all the other people that we knew also got very low grades. And even the smartest person that he knew at school who did pass only just barely passed. So it's, you know, if you see maybe like a 2-5 on one of your sections, you might think this is horrible, but it's pretty similar to what some of the other kids are getting. It's a very emotional time. I mean, I think we both cried when we got the results, even though we really weren't expecting him to pass because it just doesn't feel good to get that letter that says you didn't pass. So this would bring me to my last point that you need to prepare yourself for the emotions that are associated with this period. So not just the stress of preparing for the exam or not passing the exam, but also seeing friends of yours pass and you not passing or maybe the opposite. You know, it's, it's sad this time after primary school where all the kids are dividing into different schools and you're leaving your friends. So it's a reality no matter where you go to school because kids are splitting off to all different places. So they're go some are going to private schools, some are going to different gymnasiums, not all to the same. Some are going to secondary schools and even in secondary school, our primary class got split to two different primary school or secondary schools. So it's just a real time of change for your kids and you just need to prepare for that time. Of course, this is part of life and it's an important experience for them to go through, but it's just good to be prepared for the emotions that might, co might come during this time. Well, that's all I have to say about prepping for long gymnasium. In my next video, I'm going to talk about the public secondary schools. So if you didn't pass the uh, long gymnasium test and you didn't go to private school, most kids are going to the public secondary school, which is seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. So I'll talk all about that in my next video. And then in my last video, I'm gonna talk about the apprenticeship route. So I'll put links to those below when those videos are done. If you have a question about the Swiss public school system, please leave it below. I will try and get you an answer or point you in the right direction. I'm certainly not an expert on the topic, uh, but I'll help you as much as I can. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel so you can see more of the fun things that we do in Switzerland, all the hiking and beautiful sites that where you can take your family when you're not prepping for these exams. See you here next time.